Well, welcome to Virtual Church on Thursday, 26th of August. Great to have you with us once more. And today's amazing hero of the Christian faith is Corrie Ten Boom. Now, Corrie Ten Boom was born Cornelia, uh, but always known as Corrie. She grew up, nothing to do with Coronation Street at all, but she was born and grew up and lived most of her life in the town of Harlem in Holland, where her family were watchmakers. Her dad uh, had, a, had a sh his own shop, carried out his repairs and his watchmaking in there. Uh, Corrie herself became involved in the business uh, and, and actually became the first licensed woman watchmaker in the whole of Holland uh, in due course. So that's already one remarkable achievement under her belt. They were very much a devout Christian family. They belonged to the Dutch Reformed Church. Uh, they did many good works. Corrie herself set up a youth club for teenage girls offering all kinds of help and encouragement and support. Uh, she also did some amazing work uh, amongst people uh, with learning difficulties, which comes up a little later uh, in the story. She was born uh, in 1892, and so life continued with her sim siblings, uh, growing up in, in a household, uh, doing good, trusting in God, belonging to their church, prospering uh, in their business, which certainly picked up quite a bit after Corrie got actively involved. As the younger sister, she was expected to do the housework, but she managed to arrange a swap with her older sister, Betsy. So Betsy really loved doing the housework and she really loved uh, working in the watchmakers and, and things prospered. Their rather forgetful father needed uh, Corrie to, to make sure the business uh, actually pulled its weight uh, in their lives. So, so that was really great. Well, um, so there she was, a relatively prosperous, respected, respectable life, doing good and helping others uh, through on their journey. And things seemed to be going along pretty smoothly, really, until life-changing events took over and the world was never the same again for Corrie and her family. In May 1940, the Nazis rolled into Holland and kept it very firmly under their jackboot, ideologically, um, politically, uh, in every way. They kept the population under. And of course that immediately led to uh, big problems for the Jews in Holland. Holland had always been, or usually been, one of the more tolerant countries in Europe. Uh, there have been large settlements of of Jews in Holland following persecutions in Spain and Portugal, unfortunately, which drove Jews out to many other countries seeking refuge. And they were able to put down roots and prosper there and to some extent integrate. But of course that changed when the Nazis arrived. And Corrie ten Boom and her family devoted their time to rescuing Jews. Uh, they were of that flavour of Christianity which honours Jewish people uh, as God's chosen ones, his Old Testament people, the ones that he called himself. And this was always a hallmark of their particular faith. So uh, when they saw that the Jews were being persecuted and hounded and rounded up, uh, they decided to do their bit to help. Uh, they did all kinds of things in pursuit of this. So they constructed a hiding place in their own home. It's actually at the back of Corrie ten Boom's bedroom. And so they built a false wall there. So it was a hidden room behind it, which was quite hard to detect from outside. They lived only a couple of hundred yards from the nearest police station, which of course had been taken over and was run by the Nazis. And regular sweeps were done through the area to round up people in the resistance and people who helped Jews and Jewish people themselves. Um, 
But somehow they managed to plough on with this until February 1944. So they often had Jews in there. They um, managed to obtain a supply of ration cards because food was rationed. Now, how are you going to feed hundreds of people, uh, you know, a few at a time? Unless you can somehow get into the ration system, they managed to source those uh, from somebody. It's thought that about 800 Jews altogether owed their lives to Corrie Ten Boom and her family uh, as they sheltered and protected Jews and moved them on to places of freedom. What a fantastic achievement. In fact, to this day, Corrie Ten Boom is commemorated at the um, Holocaust Memorial in Jerusalem, uh, Yad Vashem, and she's named there as one of the righteous among the Gentiles because of the tremendous work that she did and the lives that she saved. It's very, very dangerous work, and sadly, in February 1944, they were informed on. So someone shot them to the Gestapo, uh, who were ruling, of course, the police and, and organising that, probably for money, I, I don't know why, and uh, they uh, were arrested. Uh, fortunately, the Jews they were hiding at that time uh, managed to stay in the secret room, and in spite of the searches made at the house, uh, they weren't discovered. But for Corrie and all her family, it was a disaster. They were put on trial. They were challenged about their work with people with learning difficulties because frankly the Nazi policy was to exterminate them on the grounds of eugenics. So that was one question but of course the main thing was that they found the ration cards that they had for all those people uh, and they, they were, had evidence. They managed to find evidence that they'd been sheltering Jews. So uh, trial led to prison and eventually to concentration camp. They went to Ravensbrück, uh, which as a concentration camp was a labour camp. So they're expected basically to work uh, themselves to death. So after nearly four years of sheltering Jewish people with incredible success, they found themselves in the same plight as those they had cared for and sheltered and rescued. They were, well, uh, someone managed to smuggle a Bible in. They led worship services while they were in there. They provided as much support and encouragement as they possibly could in the terrible conditions of that place. There was malnutrition, lack of hygiene, and so on. Of course, with a whole lot of women, it was a women's camp, all herded together, uh, cramped conditions, insanitary conditions. It wasn't long before fleas and lice appeared amongst them. And this was the subject of a remarkable exchange uh, between uh, Corrie Ten Boom and others who were complaining about all these flies and, uh, sorry, fleas and lice, not flies and lice. Uh, and Corrie's response, uh, riposte, was, but have you noticed but since the fleas and the lice came in, the Nazi soldiers stopped coming in. These little pests had driven out the big pests of all and stopped them bothering the women and humiliating them and doing all the things that they loved to do. So uh, they managed to piece together some kind of community life and some kind of worshipping life uh, as Christians in a concentration camp. Uh, but sadly, uh, Betsy, Corrie's beloved elder sister, died in that camp because of the terrible conditions in December 1944. So it was only a few months to go until um, Germany surrendered. There, there, there were only weeks to go until Holland was liberated but it was sadly too late for Betsy. And 12 days later, Corrie was released. No one could really work out why. And 
it was decided in the end that it must have been a clerical off, uh, error that her name was put on the release list. And uh, so she gained her liberty by mistake in the usually impeccable Nazi bureaucratic machine. Just a few days later, all the women uh, in that part of the camp where she was were, were gassed. They were put to death. Well, um, after the war, Corrie Ten Boom continued her good work. For example, setting up a rehabilitation centre for displaced people, people who'd lost everything, to gain some sort of support and help and encouragement through dark days until the economy could recover enough and they could recover their lives. They actually included in their number people who collaborated to a greater or lesser extent with a Nazi-imposed government. And of course, no one would give them a job, nobody would give them anything um, because they'd been uh, collaborators and they'd really lost all right to the respect of the community. But Corrie's house was open to them. She soon became an international speaker because her story was so inspiring. People all around the world, I think she's toured every continent. She's certainly been to the UK and like many Dutch people, her English was was excellent, so uh, she she was much in demand but on the Christian circuit to share her testimony and to witness to her faith and to try and spread the gospel of Jesus that had inspired her through such terribly difficult times and, and through such awful uh, losses. One key element of her message was forgiveness. I could let myself be eaten up with bitterness because of what the Nazis did to my family. I mean, only a few days after the Nazis arrested the family, her dad died, you know, under prison and trial and all of that. Her sister, Betsy, uh, in a concentration camp, uh, you know, and should, can I carry the bitterness of that around with me? Or can I release those people who did those evil things. Forgiveness isn't about pretending that it didn't really matter. Forgiveness is not uh, about saying that the evil didn't happen. It's acknowledging it did happen and saying, nonetheless, I'm not going to let this poison my life. I'm going to surrender it and the person who did it to you. Well, that was a key message for her. And one day into one of her meetings, when she'd be giving this message, a man came forward uh, to seek forgiveness and she recognised him. And he was one of the concentration gu camp guards. He was a member of the SS, the most brutal of all uh, Hitler's henchmen in the SS, ideologically committed to the destruction of all Jewish people and of anybody who opposed their Fuhrer. And he, this man had been particularly brutal to Corrie's sister Betsy. Can I forgive him? And she had to have a battle, uh, very, very understandably, uh, within herself about that. For her, the stakes were high because it was the terrible sufferings of Jesus in her Christian faith that had won her own forgiveness. So if he had suffered so much to forgive, then maybe uh, she could learn from him how to forgive this man and the terrible evil that he had been part of. Well, finally, Corrie Ten Boom, well, not finally, her hope was there's a life to come, but she died in 1978, I think it was. Uh, I'd better check that. But the um, she's been commemorated in a film called The Hiding Place, 
and this is a sort of a double name really because it was the name of the shelter that they provided in their home for Jewish people in Harlem during the Second World War but it was also saying that our hiding place is in God that he is our shelter and our hiding place in dark days in evil times which do come periodically upon the earth and into the life of every person whether they're a believer or not there's a hiding place to go to uh, in the Lord so um, do actually look at the link to this film uh, on YouTube which I'll be putting out with this edition uh, it's actually to the first episode YouTube's divided up into 10 minute chunks so um, but you should be able to find the content of the film in those chunks following after this which is, is mainly the opening credits so what a woman what incredible achievements and um, what a profound faith that even lasted through the horrors of Ravensbrook and what wonderful fruit from a life well lived uh, with 800 people rescued as well as countless other people blessed by the various things that Corrie ten Boom did. So our scripture today is from Psalm 32. It says, therefore, it's verse 6 and 7, therefore let everyone who is godly pray to you, to the Lord, while you may be found. Surely when the mighty waters rise, they will not reach him. You are my hiding place. You will protect me from trouble and surround me with songs of deliverance. So I hope that that will be your experience of God in difficult times, that he'll be your hiding place, a place we can run to and find shelter. Or as Jesus put it else in, in, in Matthew's Gospel, come to me when you're weary and heavy laden and I will give you rest. Let's be quiet for a moment and pray together. Lord, you are my hiding place. Thank you for your song of deliverance going up around us when we seek shelter in you. Please, Lord, help us as we reflect on the life of our amazing sister, Corrie ten Boom, to provide that same shelter for others as they struggle through life's battles. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Sorry, I've always been hopeless with dates. 1978 was actually the date of um, when the film, The Hiding Place, uh, came out. So I do watch that. Uh, just a reminder for anyone planning to come to the churches of St Andrew's Raysbury or St Michael's Horton this Sunday, we're actually having a joint service at St Michael's at 11 o'clock. So don't come to St Michael's at the normal time uh, of 9.30, there'll be no one there. And don't come to St Andrew's at 11 o'clock because there'll be nobody there. So St Michael's Place, St Andrew's Time, a joint service at St Michael's at 11am. Also coming up, and I want to uh, tell you about this uh, soon uh, in, in a bit more detail, on the Sunday the 19th of September is Back to Church Sunday and I'm hoping they're going to encourage as many people as we can to come back to church on that day so there'll be a link to a website that you can look at and the cards that you can give to people 
Well, let me know if you'd like one and invite them to come with you and back to church on that day. So until we meet again, may the Lord be with you. May he be your hiding place, your shelter and your strong tower. In Jesus' name. Amen.